Hey yo, what's going on guys, Camille here. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a DPS slash healer support gene build. I just wanna know guys, for a DPS build, we're obviously gonna go for the most damage possible. But for a healer support build, we're gonna go for healing, but we're not gonna go all in. That means we can focus more on healing and make her heal more, but we're not gonna do that. Why? That's because she can heal pretty good even with that build, and I guarantee you she's gonna give you enough healing. Probably more than you need actually. She also scales off with healing bonus when upgrading her, so if you're gonna be building her with a pure healer build, you're basically just wasting her potential, so why not just get more damage instead of like extra unnecessary healing. But I'm gonna still mention some healing options if you wanna go for that OP always full health healing. So yeah, without wasting any more time, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's begin. Alright, so starting off with her talents for a DPS build the first talent you'd want to upgrade is her auto attacks that's basically your main source of damage she's gonna be doing um physical damage and she's also gonna be healing while you're auto attacking with her but yeah you want to do damage with gene as your main dps that's the go-to talent the second talent you'd want to upgrade for a dps build is her elemental skill it does a nemo damage it helps you generate some particles and it does great damage too it's also a great source if you want to do like fall damage even though i don't really recommend recommend it but yeah if you want to do it if it's fun for you then yeah you can abuse fall damage with this skill and lift enemies in the air then throw them and they're gonna get fall damage so yeah it's it's a pretty cool skill finally the last talent you'd want to upgrade is her elemental burst it gives you quite a good amount of damage actually and it also of course heals so yeah it's a pretty good burst but as a dps we're not really gonna count on this skill to heal because we're not gonna be building gene as a healer and as a said for the damage is more efficient to like do damage with your auto attacks and skill so this is not your first priority talent you'd want to upgrade but of course for a dps build you'd want to upgrade that too at least to like level six but yeah you don't need to rush it now for support build the first talent you'd want to upgrade is your elemental burst that's your main support talent kind of it's the talent you use to heal and it, as i said before it does some damage some good damage it helps you swirl and stuff like that so yeah yeah, that's your go-to talent. The second talent you'd want to upgrade is your elemental skill. You're gonna be using that a lot to generate like particles and stuff like that and it also does some good anemo damage if you want to swirl. So yeah that's the second talent you'd want to upgrade. The last talent you'd want to upgrade is your auto attacks. I mean you're probably not gonna be using that a lot. You may use that to generate like some healing if you can't do your ult yet or something like that. But I don't really recommend you healing with your auto attacks. It's pretty mediocre but yeah there's no harm in upgrading it all right so now moving her weapons for a dps build we're gonna do her weapons in tiers the first tier weapons are gonna be the aquila favonia it's pretty much the best weapon to use on her as a dps it has physical damage and a good passive so yeah you probably want to go for that if you can the second weapon in the first tier is the summit shaper and finally the third weapon is the primordial jade cutter the second tier weapons is the skyward blade it's still a pretty good weapon actually it has a pretty high base attack and some like energy recharge which is not really your go-to stat on dps gene also the passive is awesome so yeah it's it's a pretty good like weapon for even for dps gene it falls a little bit behind the other five stars but yeah it's still an awesome weapon then we got the black sword and finally the black lift long sword now finally the third tier weapons we got the prototype rancor it's your best free to play option it's also pretty good actually for dps gene it has physical damage as a sub stat which is pretty good so yeah that's probably your go-to if you're free to play then we got the flu and finally if you don't have any of these weapons you can go for the harbinger of dawn it's a pretty good three star so yeah you can use it now for a healer support build your first tier weapons are the skyward blade it's definitely the best weapon for support gene it has energy recharge which is pretty good the passive is not really that good especially for like a healer gene but it's still like fine so yeah the skyward blade is your go-to option if you have it for support gene then you have the J cutter and finally the aquila favonia these don't really have the best stats for a support gene but the high base attack and the good refinements actually makes up for it these are still probably like two of the best weapons on support gene so you want to use them if you have them too 
second tier weapons we have the summit sharper we have the faster in desire the faster in desire is probably your go-to free to play option i know a lot of people don't have it it's from the previous albedo event but if you have the faster in desire it's probably your go-to option if you don't have any of the five star the last weapon on the second tier is the sacrificial sword it's pretty good for energy recharge and it's gonna help you do like more healing overall so yeah it's a pretty good weapon for support g now the third tier weapons we have the flute and the favonius sword and finally if you don't have any of these weapons you can go for the fillet blade all right so now finally moving our artifacts the best artifact set for a dps gene is probably the four piece gladiator it's gonna help you do more damage with your auto attacks which is pretty good and it's also gonna boost your attack which means it's gonna boost like your healing and support options and it's also gonna boost your skill and burst damage so yeah the four piece gladiator is probably your go-to option but i know a lot of people don't have like a full four piece ready to use it on any so your second option is the two piece bloodstained chivalry and the two piece gladiator the two piece bloodstained chivalry is gonna boost your auto attacks and that's what we need and you're gonna get the extra attack from the two piece gladiator so it's a pretty good set combination on dpsg now for a support build your go-to option is probably a four piece veridescent it's gonna help your other characters do more damage which is pretty good and it's also gonna boost your burst and skill damage by a lot so yeah you want to use a four piece veridescent unless you already have another character on your team that uses the four piece veridescent then in that case we all know it doesn't stack so you're definitely gonna be wasting it so you don't want to use it the second best artifact set you want to use on gene is the four piece noblesse oblige it's also a very very good support option but as i said before it's like the four piece veridescent if you're using another character on your team that uses the four piece noblesse oblige it doesn't really stack so you're gonna be wasting it if you can use a two piece veridescent and you can use a four piece noblesse oblige you can go for a two piece veridescent and a two piece noblesse oblige that's not really gonna be a great support option but it's gonna help your gene do more damage by yourself so yeah it's still a pretty good option if you can't use any of the other two sets all right so now moving for the stats and your artifacts for the main stats on a dps build you want attack percent on your sands physical damage in your goblet then crit rate or crit damage on your circlet i'm gonna tell you how to decide between crit rate and crit damage in a little bit for a support build you want either attack percent or energy recharge in your sands also i'm gonna tell you how to decide in a little bit then you'd want either attack percent or a nemo damage bonus in your goblet you can go with a nemo damage bonus to do more damage with jean herself which is what i recommend and you can go with attack percent to do decent damage with jean and also like heal more so if you want like a pretty healer focused jean you can go with attack percent on the goblet if you want to do more damage and decent healing you can go with nemo damage bonus on the circlet you can go either for healing bonus and attack percent i personally recommend attack percent it's gonna boost your healing and it's also gonna help you do more damage if you want to focus on healing though you can go for healing bonus too now for the subsets for a dps build your first priority stat is either crit rate or crit damage then you want to go attack percent or flat attack then finally energy recharge for a support build your first priority is attack percent then energy recharge then crit rate or crit damage now of course this ranking may change and this is how you can tell so for a dps gene you'd want your crit rate to be around 50 to 70 percent and your crit damage to be basically double that which is 100 to 140 percent so based on that you can decide how to tweak your substats a little bit or what circle you should go for either crit rate or crit damage and for a support gene you'd want your energy recharge to be between 160 to 190 percent based on that you could decide what to go for on your sands either attack percent or energy recharge and of course which substats you should prioritize all right so now finally moving our team comps i honestly don't have really much to say i mean she's a nemo and she doesn't really require much to use she requires you to invest in her gear but she doesn't require like a whole team built around her to be like used in the best way so yeah the team comps is not really that important but i just want to give you guys some tips to like optimize your team comps to do the best you can so for a dps build as i said before she deals physical damage so if you want to go after the reaction superconducts this is pretty good it's gonna help you boost your damage so yeah you might want 
want to go for that also as i said before if you want to keep swirling it's not really the best reaction but it's going to give you like some decent damage so you might use a character who can apply like his elements consistently in the game like shingshu fishel like shang ling for example a lot of other characters who can like consistently apply elements now just a team comp example for a dps sheen of course you'd want sheen as your main damage dealer then you want fishel as a sub dps then you'd want kaya as like a support to trigger superconduct and we can add like sucrose for example as a last team member for the anemo resonance now for support or healer gene she actually works with literally any team she's a nemo she's a healer so yeah it just sky is the limit but for just for a team example for a healer or support sheen you can go shao as a main dps then sheen as a support and a healer then bennett as a team buffer and let's say jean lee as a shielder and support so yeah that was the video guys i tried to keep it short if i said something wrong or you have any other ideas suggestions you want to ask me something please leave it in the comments below first i've got to leave a like subscribe to the channel and see y'all in the next video peace